is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. It's the 24th of March. I hope you've had a blessed week and I hope you're having an amazing weekend. I welcome you to Across the Atlantic Ministry. My name is Okwe Mikawade. And For those who are new to this platform, you have not missed your road. You're in the right place. And for those who have been keen followers of this platform, I welcome you in Jesus' mighty name. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. Father, as I share your word, give it wings. Speak through me. Father Lord, let this be for your glory and for nothing else. Let this work stir something in the heart of men as they listen. Most importantly, let him grant them on that pathway of eternal life, which is salvation. Father Lord, thank you for I know you've heard. Thank you for I know you've answered. In your mighty and glorious name, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Our topic for today, there is a laughter. Yes, there is a laughter. And that laughter... It's not the laughter that comes from the excesses of the world, but the laughter that comes from the Holy Spirit. So I'm excited today to share this beautiful topic with you. Because as I was brooding and praying, the Holy Spirit also mentioned that I, that I share a true life story or encounter with you. And I hope that as you listen, may this bless you and bless anyone who encounters this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. The topic for today, like I said earlier, is there is a laughter. And I'm going to read from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, which says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. So men are looking for a substitute to laughter. Or a substitute to something that would make them encounter laughter. And this verse is saying that be not drunk in wine. And literally, wine is something that intoxicates, something that, that controls. And that's why it's alcohol, it's spirit. And then the content of this also. Sometimes when you have it inside of you, it can lead one to a path that sometimes you don't subscribe for or you do not subscribe for. That there's a substitute feeling that when it fills you, it will give you that genuine laughter. That laughter that looks way beyond the despairs of the world that looks way beyond the burdens of the world. That laughter that is pure, that is joyful, that is gentle, that also have emotions that glorifies the name of the Lord. He's saying, do not be drunk with wine. Let's not forget that anything that also, it, more like transits into an habit, and I'll be that maybe when you started first off, it felt really good. It gave a satisfaction in quotes that made you feel better at that point in time. But afterwards, you felt heavy and sober. And that's a temporal type of substitute that the world has sold to men, that the devil has sold to men. Whereas the word of God is seen. That this path will lead you into darkness. This habit can lead you into darkness. It could control you and take over. Because you started first and thought you were in control, but afterward you notice that this thing is now controlling you. Now, in context, different type of habits as well. But it's that thing that you know that whenever you engage in it, afterward you feel sober, you feel heavy. 
gives you that present satisfaction, but afterwards you, do, you know that, no, I am on the wrong path. You know that I'm destroying myself. That is why this topic is for you. That the substitutes, the intoxicates, which is first off, giving your life to Christ and then, that's if you have not, and if you have, feeding yourself with the Holy Ghost, engaging yourself with the Holy Ghost. I recently realized that there's no greater laughter that you can encounter than the laughter that the Holy Spirit gives to you. Trust me on this. So joy and laughter is a warm expression of good things. And this will lead me to this story. This is a true life encounter, my own story of how God saved me from the hands of alcohol and illicit drugs, smoking, how God delivered me. There is a lie the devil sells. For those who know that I had a career in the secular music, music industry for a while, for almost a, I would say for almost a decade. And even bef before I became, I would say a professional artist, maybe whilst I was still in university, there's this lie that the devil sells to you. That the only way you can feel really better while you are recording or while you're going to the studio and even while you're even engaging with the opposite sex, that the best way is to get high. And the devil sold this tr lie through men. And I'll say this is when I started getting, my, get, getting into what we regard to as you know, drinking of alcohol and engaging in things that did not glorify the name of God. For God wants us to cut off from these things that does not glorify his name because he knows that it's a bait for the devil to make you bound. So, when we're in the SUG, the student union, being a member of the student union, um, that's what they say you have to be rugged. And in this sense, it's quite competitive. It's quite ruthless. And the more people you meet, the more introduction into things that does not glorify the name of God. Because in a way, you are, you are an influence. You are also an artist. And then maybe I created some type of influence. And this brought more friends, more introduction to things that were illicit. Anyway, I'll jump it over. So to feel better sometimes, if you, you know, God has given you a gift already. But the devil wants to give you an alternative. He wants to take the glory. So it will be like, oh, the only way you can really feel better is by engaging in this. So I fast forward to 2020. And I feel like 2020 was the time God really arrested me. My wife, who was my fiancé then, came all the way to Nigeria, the 14th of February. I engaged her, feeling so happy. Glory to Jesus. Even though I've not known God into deep. So after that time, we had a show. But you know, there's a, there's a way you engage in something that you feel this emptiness. You feel that emptiness that, geez, why am I drinking? Why am I still doing this? You know that God is prompting you to get out of this life. Because the lie that the devil sold through us, to us, through men, was that, I mean, as an artist, it is normal. So for you that have gone through peer pressure because, and then start engaging in things that does not glorify the name of God, being an alcoholic, this is my call to you. That the end, the end is death. The end is darkness. And the devil does not mind so I engaged that and I had a show afterwards that show was in I think Anambra or Oka, one of those cities so the next day I had to travel with my manager my road manager and my and my, I think my, myself, my road manager and my fiancé the next day and she came all the way from the UK 
So it looked like a very beautiful, you know, you know, everything was looking really nice. But deep down, I knew that if I carried on smoking and, you know, drinking and doing all these things, there's something that was telling me that this end would not be good. So we went all the way. So before the show, we had to spend a day. And the show was, the, we had to spend a day in that city. Then the next day was the show. Glory to Jesus. My wife is a cinematographer. And she was shooting a video for me. But before that time, I had some boys who came around. Oh, ah, guy, one more. This one, this one, this one will carry you, will carry you go there. They bought drinks and they brought some type of smoke. So it was it was mixed with so many kind, it was mixed with things. So my foolish self, so I went in. Drank smoke. And the devil wanted to make that fairy tale. He wanted to make it his own fairy tale. So a young singer who got engaged just the day before died right after. Beautiful story for the devil. Yes, my enemy died that day. Because they said I passed out for hours. The devil wanted to grab my soul almost immediately. He didn't have time. Because in his head, he said, This one that is my property, this one that has represented me for long. Now you want to start a life here? Yeah? So, hours, heating, blowing, you know, and then the part of the world we're in, it was hard to get medical services almost immediately. So these guys were trying their best, heating, blowing. Just like Jacob still feels that pain on his hips after he fought with an angel, I still feel the pain of that blow till date. A reminder that not, it's a reminder of God telling you not to ever go near the materials of the devil. Till I found myself in an hospital. Now I knew it was not whatever the doctor did that saved me. Because they literally were not even doing anything when I woke up. But before I woke up, that encounter was it is your last chance. This is your last chance. The mercy of God saved me. But trust me, Satan thought he has caught a pass mark. He thought he has ended it all. But that was mercy that spoke for me. So people might not have that chance. We've seen people who've gotten drunk, who've got engaged in things, who have done things that they were not meant to do. At the end of the day, if they had a fatal accident, they choked from whatever they took, from some committed suicide, some did crazy things. That is why I'm passionate as I'm speaking to you about this. The mercy of God. It may not have woke up from that bed. I knew that if I carry on being disobedient, that the end was death. And that's the work of the devil. is to still kill and destroy. He has no other thing to give to you, my brother, my sister. Nothing that he has to give to you. So he sells you that beautiful story. That I'm all, and like this you go feel. Oh. And people have found an alternative or an habit or an addiction as a substitute to their laughter. This gives them that temporal satisfaction. But afterwards, they become, they become sober. They become tired, they become frustrated. The joy of God looks beyond the despairs of the world, the, the, the wickedness of the world, the pressure of the world. And gives you that direct satisfaction when you brood with Him. And you need the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this will take off to the book of John 15 11. It was at this point. I started finding God. I started finding God. Because I knew that my hand would have been that place that would give devil joy. But thanks to Jesus. And it's that Jesus I'm speaking to you about. He's the one I'm introducing you to. John chapter 15 verse 11 says, I have told you that I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. He's the one who gives complete joy. And there's a gift of the Spirit which is the gift of joy, of laughter. I 
finding God. It is that joy of the Holy Spirit that blots out every darkness, that blots out every disappointment, that blots out everything. I didn't even know that I could be saved from the hands of these things, that I could escape from this snare. Because the way the story, the, the way the devil sold it to us is like, you cannot do without it. That's a lie from the pit of hell. The devil wants to hold you bound in lies, in deceits. So we give you something that will keep you busy and then take you away from the, from, from the mercy of God. And how do you find this joy that the book of joy is saying? Making the knowledge of God a greater reality in your heart. Because if something does not substitute it, you probably might still be craving. If the Holy Spirit is not substituted at that joy, as that laughter that you truly need, the devil will be trying again and again because he's a sore loser. So, making the knowledge of God a greater reality in your life. So, instead of looking at things that probably might promote that craving, you look at the word of God, you pray. Speaking the spirit. Speaking in tongues is one of the biggest things that blots out those things that the devil may have used to hold any man bound. Any man bound, it means any man or any woman in context. Act of obedience. It was my disobedience that gave the devil the chance to almost claim my life. Out of that continual sin didn't care and the devil does not care as well but you think that you that you think you are doing that thing and you feel like it's giving you a temporal satisfaction think about the end of it think about it my brother my sisters loving the people around us knowing the father the son and the holy spirit it's the one you need to know instead you're putting your attention or putting all those your cravings or those additional habits on what the world has proposed and the devil is ready to propose as much as you are ready to take in you are meant to know the father the son and the holy spirit as by finding god by seeking him by praying by, by reading his words by looking at bible passages that the plot has your heart from those rem remnants of the devil or from the seed of the devil. To let our life blows on in obedience and service. Total dedication of your life to Jesus. One thing I can show you of, if God can save me, he can save you. If God can save me, ah, he can save you, my brother, my sister. Don't get it twisted. Now, it's the same things that will make you feel proud because it makes you feel high and then it represents you gives you a different identity you would think you're on top of the world right? it's a lie and then that intoxication will now make people do what they're not meant to do it, it will not, it's now it's a gateway into bigger sins so there's a laughter that the spirit of God gives that when it breaks out in your soul breaks out in your spirit the joy of the Lord will be your strength and that is my prayer to you my brothers my sister the Father Lord let the spirit of God blows on let it blows on in the life of your people carrying the grace to be obedient and to be a vessel to you they clutter everything, every seed of the enemy that has given the devil a chance in their life. Let the life of your people blow on. Fill them with your spirit of God. Fill them with your spirit, Lord. Fill them with your, with your joy, with your laughter. Grant them the grace of obedience and the grace to give their life as a service to you. For obedience is better than sacrifice. 
and the devil tries on his obedience. Anyone who, has, who, has, who is hearing this word, I come against the spirit of disobedience. That as you hear this word, let restoration begin to come into your heart. Let those cravings, let those habits begin to be blotted out. And let the spirit of God move into you. I make you hope. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. I hope this word has blessed you. There is a laughter. That laughter is in the Holy Spirit. I pray that you encounter that divine laughter in Jesus' name. Make sure you share the word of God. Spread it to family, friends, colleagues. Tell the people about Jesus. Do not be ashamed of him. And he would not be ashamed of you. Have a blessed one. Shalom.